So you've worked with linear inequalities at various points in this class previously, but now we're going to talk about nonlinear equalities. Nonlinear equalities are inequalities that have to do with either polynomials or rational functions, or both. So the main uh, process for solving a nonlinear equality is always get one side of it to be zero. So even if you have some polynomial over here, and some polynomial over here, for example, let's say less than or equal to, you want to subtract all the terms from one side to the other to make it all equal to zero. The next thing is always get zero on one side and then factor the polynomial. So you always want to factor the polynomial and then all of those terms, you know, the x minus a, x minus b, etc., and whatever you know powers they might be too. You want to set all of those numbers on a number line, and then you can just check your value. So we have a, we have b, we have c, etc. All you need to do is check a value in each one and think about what, what sign you would get, either positive or negative. And in this case, the way I set this one up, we're looking for our result to be positive or equal to zero for it to win, for it to be correct. So anything that sets up equality, meaning in this case, anything that lets you equal zero is in there. So all of these would be op or closed circles because they would work. If this was strictly greater than, then all of these would have to be open circles, for example. The other thing you can do is you really only need to check one, and then you can use the multiplicity test to go along the line. So for example, let's say this power on x minus a was 1, but this power on x minus b was 2. You pick a number left of a, you see what you get. Let's say we got a minus here. You know that when you cross a, since it has an odd multiplicity, this is similar to when you're graphing the polynomials, it has to change sign, so it has to be positive. But b, which has an even multiplicity, would have to keep the same sign, so it would have to also stay positive. And you could go along switching the signs or keeping them the same, depending on the multiplicity of the power. And that's all you would have to do to figure out where the uh, solution would be or not. And in this case, since we wanted greater than or equal to, all of these, this interval right here, for example, would work, because all these numbers are positive. So let's look at one where you'd have to use a rational function. So, let's say we have a rational function and another rational function. Rational, of course, being a fraction involving polynomials. Well, in that case, you still want to get one side equal to zero, so you'd have to subtract over. The problem here is, is that since these might have denominators with different things, you have to get a common denominator to put them together. So what you want to do is subtract it over and get one rational term by combining your rational expressions into one fraction. So this here is going to involve common denominator. So one thing that a lot of people do, which you can't do in this problem, is you cannot just cross multiply and, and bring the denominators up and basically transform it into just regular polynomials. You can't do that because you're going to lose those possible uh, answers that you can get if they're still in the denominator. So you still want to subtract it over, you still want to get zero on one side, but you have to get a common denominator and combine it all into one big rational function. Then you're basically going to do the same thing. You're going to factor the top and the bottom, so x minus a, x minus b, etc. On here, you'd have x minus c, x minus d, on and on and on. So this is your rational function. You factor the top and the bottom. And then you essentially do the same thing. You set up the number line with a, b, c, d, etc., etc. And you're going to test points just like you did here. Now, anything that's on the bottom for in the way I wrote this one here, C and D, those would be dividing by zero, so they're definitely not going to work. You're going to have open circles on those. In this case, since it's a strict inequality, 
if the top was zero, so if we had A or B, that wouldn't work either because we would get zero. So in this case, all of them would be open circles. And then you can check again by doing the multiplicity test. Try one number here, and then A, B, C, and D, whatever the powers on those factors are, you either change sign or keep the same sign. And again, here we're looking for something that's going to be greater than zero. So, for example, if you had one instead, when on both sides, instead of on both sides having a rational function, let me give you an example. Say we had this here. x squared plus 5. And let's say we said that was greater than 3. So, by what we talked about here, 3, it is a rational function, it's just a number. But we do need to get it to be 0, so you'd have to subtract 3 over. We get one side equals 0, that's exactly what we want. In order to combine these, you'd have to get a common denominator, so you'd have to multiply this one by x squared plus 5 over x squared plus 5, put them together, and then approach this the same way. So anytime you have a rational inequality or a polynomial inequality, you always want to get one side of it equal to 0, and you want to factor out the rest, then always do the number line test and use multiplicities to determine if your sign is negative or positive. Then finally, depending on what you actually wanted, greater than zero, positive, for example, you would know exactly which intervals would solve your uh, equation, your inequality.